about the mystery of iniquity. What does the mystery of iniquity mean? The mystery of iniquity. It's it's written in the Bible in the <clears throat> in the King James Bible in Second Thessalonians two seven. He says, "For the mystery of iniquity does already work. He only he uh, now or who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way." Now the mystery of iniquity, mystery of iniquity. This 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 is a bit confusing to most people, and they ask, "What exactly could this be?" Okay, what could it be? Now, uh, before we attempt to interpret the meaning of uh, the mystery of iniquity, before we try to interpret, first, let's look at the context of the passage in question. We check it very, very well, okay? And we go down to verse 12. It says, uh, from verse 1 to 12, it says, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by a gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or troubled, neither by spirit, or by word, or by letter from us, as that the day of, the Christ, uh, of, of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself about all that is called God and that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that is God. Remember you not that uh, when I was with you I told you these things and uh, now you know what withholdeth him. You know what withholdeth him that he might be revealed in his time. For the, min for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he now who letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And that wicked, that wicked, okay, will be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him who is coming, okay, he has said that wicked, the big W is showing us is a certain being, okay, who is coming. Even him who is coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they may be saved. And for this cause God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Uh, that they might all be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Hmm. Now we have to understand uh, one thing, yeah. That uh, Paul's intent in this passage is to correct a false teaching that was being propagated, namely that uh, the day of the Lord or the end times judgment had already come, and the Christians of the Church of Thessalonica had been left behind to endure it. That's that's what they were thinking. So Paul was trying to counter this. And uh, Paul wanted to set the record straight about Christ's return and our gathering together to him. That is what we call the rapture. And uh, Paul stated that two events that go before the day of the Lord are, okay, they had to happen. It was the apostasy or the falling away, okay, the falling away or the rebellion. And uh, the revelation of the man of lawlessness, the man of lawlessness, okay, He'll, he would have to be revealed before the day of Christ comes. Are, are you getting the point? So all, all, all this, which we call the mystery of iniquity, would have to be one, uh, would have one day to culminate in the appearance of, of the Antichrist, who right now, as we speak, is still at work. He's working behind the scenes. Are you getting the point? He's already working in the world, but he's being restrained for now so that the world is not as evil as it could be. But one day it will be, because the restrainer will be removed from the world. Now, up to there, I'm sure probably, I, I don't know if I've mixed you up, but... Uh, 
The Bible tells us that. Now, we must ask ourselves, what is this apostasy? What's this apostasy? The Greek word for apostasy is apostasia. Okay, apostasia. The one that you have read in uh, 2 Thessalonians 2.3, here. Uh, two three. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Falling away is also called apostasy. Okay, that apostasy, falling away, or the departure, departing from something. People will depart from some truth or something. Okay, or uh, they will defect or they will revolt. Now this is the end times apostasy, which you are being told in Second Thessalonians. And uh, is the mass falling away. Instead of where people they were. It's like people will fall from uh, some point of grace where they, they stood before. People used to confess God more and it's like they'll stop confessing him. People used to love the things of God and they like love the things of the world. And th things like that, you know. That's what we call uh, apostasy. It's the mass falling away of people from God as the world prepares to receive the lawless one. Okay? The lawless one who claims to be uh, the false messiah or the messiah or whatever, the antichrist, okay? Now, it is unprecedented worldwide revolt against all things which are godly. In the end times, people will follow this man, the man of sin, and they will fall away. They will refuse everything concerning the things of God. And all things which are godly. And even many who claim to be Christians will be caught up in it. Will be caught in this kind of stuff. They'll be falling away from the truth. And uh, another possibility espoused by a small minority of scholars is that uh, the apostasy is the departure of the church. Some people say it's the departure of the church. I, I won't say it is not or it is because I've heard so many people talk about this. And uh, I always listen to J.D. Farag uh, reading the, the old uh, King James. I don't know which version he was reading. It says it will not happen until the departure comes first. So for, for, for some people, for him, he translates that the apostasy is basically the rapture first. I cannot deny or agree or things or what. There are so many people with different uh, understandings, understandings of this falling away, this apostasy. And uh, it's okay. Whatever way you're going to say, these are the end times, okay? Now, but we have to understand that Paul alludes in verse, uh, verse 1 that, that it is very important to note that a pre-tribulation interpretation does not require equating apostasia with rapture. Remember what Paul said here in 1 Thessalonians 4.13-18. to According to what I'm trying to calculate here, uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, 4, let me show you, uh, 4 verse uh, 13, if you equate, uh, 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 if you, you try to equate apostasy with the rapture, I think uh, there's somewhere where we might, you might get lost. Let me show you. But you, brethren, be not weary in the well-doing. If any man obey not our word by this epistle, not that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Hmm. Yet count him not as enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now, the Lord of peace himself give, give you peace always, by all means, the Lord be with you. The salutation of, of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token of every uh, epistle I write. The grace of God be with you. Now look at these two verses here. Brethren, don't be weary in doing good. If any man not obey, if any man go against the word of this epistle, or they fall away, if any man fall away, just not that man, but have no company with him. That he may be ashamed. Hmm. Now it means there are some people who in the last days will be falling away from the truth. Apostasy. And they'll be trying to refuse to obey the word of God. And they'll be saying, no, I don't, I don't want that word which was preached by Paul. I don't want that. I, I, I want to do my own things. And Paul is telling us, don't worry about these guys. Let them do their thing. 
Okay, let them do their thing. Just note them and avoid them. Why? Because apostasy, people will be falling away from the truth. And they'll be running away to something else. So if you try to equate that with the rapture, then some verses here might not make some sense. Because how do you explain this verse in the last days? Because Paul was talking about the last days also, remember, concerning here. Anyway, first, let's ask ourselves, let's ask ourselves, who is this man of lawlessness? Who is this man of lawlessness? Now, this man of lawlessness, he is a literal person, often referred to as the Antichrist. Is the Antichrist. And he will be Satan's henchman, also called a, a pseudo-Christ, a fake Christ, who will perform miracles, signs, and wonders. If you enjoy miracles, signs, and wonders, then this guy is going to trick you so much. He's going to deceive you. Because he'll come with a lot of miracles, signs, and wonders. And the Bible tells us about this. But his miracles, signs, and wonders will be from Satan. Will be from Satan. And the ultimate goal will be to deceive the whole world. And uh, John the Apostle, the Revelator, he wrote that many Antichrists... Uh, no, no, uh, John wrote that many Antichrists will precede the coming of the ultimate Christ. He told us that there will be some many, 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 many kind of Antichrist. Okay? In First John 2 verses uh, 18 should be. Okay? That there will be so many Antichrists. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists. Whereby we know it is the last time. So right now we have so many Antichrists. And those antichrists, they are working with the spirit of this main guy here, the man of lawlessness. They, they, they are following him. This guy is the beast. This guy, he'll be the beast. Have you heard about the beast? With some, I don't know how many heads and uh, things like that. In Revelation 13 from verse 1 to 10, it's talking about this beast, the antichrist. And the little horn. You, you remember the little horn? Okay, the little horn in uh, Daniel 7:8. And also the king who, da, who does as he pleases. The Antichrist will be some king who will do whatever he pleases. He will do whatever he wants. And he will not, he will not give any uh, adoration to anything. He'll, he'll do what he wants. And the king shall do according to his will, whatever he pleases. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. He will magnify himself above every God. Have you seen us reading this in 2 Thessalonians? That he will, he will consider no other God above himself. He will sit in the holy temple and declare himself that he is God. Are you seeing the Bible connecting? And he shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. We know the God of gods is Jehovah. And uh, shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that is determined shall be done. Are you seeing this kind of... Uh, 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 th this, this man of lawlessness being explained. Now the Bible tells us that the mystery of iniquity is already at work in the world. The mystery of iniquity is already at work. But uh, the forces that would bring the Antichrist to power are eager to establish his unholy kingdom. But they are currently being restrained by the restrainer. And I'll do another video uh, uh, probably explaining who the restrainer is, okay? Because the Bible is saying that uh, there is a restrainer who is restraining all this in uh, 2 Thessalonians, where I've just read to you. Let me just uh, go back there and show you uh, what the Bible says about this. Uh, and, and now you know what withhold it that he might be revealed in his time. Withholding who? The Antichrist. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he, only he now, who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the world. So who is letting this? Who is restraining? Who is holding? Who is holding this? Who is this restrainer? Possibilities include that uh, this restrainer is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit lives in the church. And uh, we have to understand that uh, the church, 
having the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is holding things and he's telling people, don't do this, don't do that. And uh, have you seen like online, the people who are against uh, this thing which is happening in the world right now, this whole deception, most of them are Christians. And uh, them being Christians, people are saying, oh, these Christians, they are dumb, they are confused, they are, they are telling us not to take this thing, not to take this thing. And uh, why are Christians saying that? Because there is a spirit of God who is in them, who is trying to tell them that there is something fishy about this whole thing. Are you understanding the point? So the restrainer in us is the one who is holding things. And the same restrainer is also trying to uh, hold things through uh, the Holy Spirit. Is also Remember, the Bible says that every... Uh, different leaderships are, are, are brought forth by God. So God is putting in some, some leaderships in different places and saying, no, there are some leaders who are coming up and saying, no, we will not agree to this or not. But of course, many of them have fallen away. So it's kind of the Holy Spirit is the restrainer here. Now, uh, the people of Thessalonica, they knew the identity of the restrainer. So, <laughs> Paul did not elaborate verse 6. Verse 6. And you know what withholdeth. So, it's these people of Thessalonica, they knew. You know what withholdeth that it might be revealed in his time. So, he did not need to elaborate who withholdeth. Because it's, it's kind of they knew. And uh, the Spirit, remember, the Spirit of God convicts the world. The Spirit of God, he does convict the world, and indwells in the church, enabling God's people to be a limiting influence on the world's evil. And the presence of the Holy Spirit in the world is right now thwarting the revelation of the man of lawlessness. Wickedness gets no traction in uh, seizing global power, but this will change. And uh, upon the departure of the church from this earth, at which Time the Holy Spirit's indwelling presence will depart. The mystery of iniquity will have some free reign. And uh, tribulation on earth will uh, start. Because that, that guy, the, the, the man of lawlessness, will come with miracles, signs and wonders. And he will deceive many. Just go and read Matthew 24. <coughs> so now, let's ask ourselves one, one question here. What is the mystery of iniquity? What is that mystery? I'm sure you have spoken too much and I'm not giving you the point. So what is that mystery of iniquity? I just wanted to lay some foundation. Um, or what is that secret power of lawlessness? There's also other versions of the Bible, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not into checking many versions. I'm only into King James. But of course, in other versions, they call it the power of lawlessness. Uh, we have to understand that the word mystery denotes something hidden for some time. It's something which has been hidden. Hidden. Mystery. It's been hidden for a time before God chooses to reveal it. And in the Bible, we have several mysteries. Uh, the ones that I know, there are almost seven kind of mysteries. I'm, I'm just going to quote a few mysteries here, especially the mysteries which are, uh, are given to the Gentile church by the Apostle Paul. Remember, Paul told us about a couple of mysteries, hidden things that uh, were not known. But uh, he revealed them to us. Remember in Romans uh, 16, 25, Paul tells us, now to him that is of power to establish you according to, the, to my gospel and the preaching of Christ, Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. The preaching of Christ Jesus according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Remember, Jesus was not preached directly him from back then in the Old Testament. They never used to preach Jesus, that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and rose again. They never used, because Jesus had not uh, died, literally. So how could you have preached? So it was hidden for some time. Okay? But now it's made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Are you seeing? That's one mystery. Also, we have another mystery here in Ephesians. If you have ever uh, learned about the mysteries in the Bible, there are so many. Just go and check uh, uh, the, in, in uh, Robert's Brecker 
uh, preachings, just go and check his sermons. He has spoken about the seven mysteries in the Bible, and you will be able to see them in depth. But I'll just give you, you know, uh, slowly, just once, once, once here. Okay, just see whereby. When you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. You see, there's a mystery of Christ. There's a mystery which is called the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. It was not made known. It is now revealed unto these holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit, by the Gentiles, that the Gentiles, this is the mystery, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. You see, this one was not known. That the Gentiles will also inherit the kingdom of heaven. It was not known back then. So it's a mystery. I'm just showing you this so that you can understand the Bible has a couple of uh, mysteries. Eh? Colossians 1 verses uh, 25 to 27. This is another mystery. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints. Uh -huh. This mean mystery, to whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. You see, the mystery, this is another mystery, that Christ is inside you. Do you know that Christ Jesus is in you and you are in Christ? This is a mystery which was hidden. So I'm trying to show you this so that I can tell you that there is a mystery of lawlessness which is also at work, hiding itself. Just the same way there have been other mysteries. Mysteries is basically something hidden. And also, do you know that the rapture was also a mystery? It was not, nobody knew about the rapture before uh, Paul came and told us about it after it was revealed to him by uh, God. See, the rapture was also a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. You see, Paul is talking about the rapture here. It was also a mystery. A mystery. But now, when we come back to this particular mystery in, uh, in uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, 2.7, the one which I'm talking about, the, that, that, that lawlessness, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who letteth will let, but... He, until he be taken out of the way. It means this man of lawlessness has already been working behind the scenes. He's already at work. He's been doing a lot of things. Have you been seeing how people have been dying in different uh, things, uh, different situations and different, uh, you see, uh, governments, they are, they're having issues with other governments, wars and rumors of wars and issues and pestilences and sicknesses, diseases and things. And you ask yourself, who is really causing all this mystery, uh, misery in the world? Who is making this world to be like this? Why, why, why is it happening like this? Why, why all these things? Why all the lawlessness? Have you ever asked yourself, ca can't these governments in the world just come together and uh, just agree? Can they just agree? You see, the Bible tells us we, we don't fight flesh and blood. We fight principalities in, the, in high places. And when you're trying to fight, uh, you know, uh, uh, government and say, oh, this person is corrupt or that one is corrupt or this one is doing this and that, you should just basically pray for them because it's the mystery of iniquity which is already in work. He's been working behind the scenes and uh, he's leading to a worldwide rebellion against God. People are rebelling. Have you ever looked at uh, the education system and what people are being taught? And you look at them and you ask, when you are young, when you are young, just when you left home as a small boy, a small girl, your mother used to tell you, God created the world. God created us in his own image. We are created by God. When you went to school, what did they tell you? No, forget, Keith, you, God did not create you. You came from a monkey. And you're like, mm, what is really wrong? The mystery of lawlessness, the mystery of iniquity. He's already at work trying to make sure that you forget everything concerning God. Okay? He's been working in secret. Trying to create uh, uh, some global governance and things like that. And uh, we have to understand that uh, the revelation of this lawlessness will, coinci will coincide with the revelation of the Antichrist, who is mentioned in 2 Thessalonians 2.8.
like I've read to you. The man of sin will rise to power and he will represent a climax of lawlessness, a satanic movement against the administration of God. And uh, this secret, this kind of secret behind the sins movement is still restrained by the Holy Spirit but is waiting to be revealed. The Holy Spirit is still restraining that and he's saying no I, I i don't want it to be known right now so the mystery of iniquity has been at work for a long time for a long time many 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 kind of things i don't want to mention them here because i don't want issues but you understand that devil has been working through and uh, since paul's day and uh, when finally it erupts in all his uh, hideousness the world will be shaken to its core. And the Antichrist who leads the, the, the descent into lawlessness will set up a new standard of depravity. And the enormity of the acts of uh, moral monsters as uh, you remember Joseph Stalin and those kind of people who, who did so many bad acts. You remember Hitler. I'm sure you can remember all these kind of people. You remember in Africa we had one called Idi Amin and what he did. You remember all these kind of monsters who did evil to the world? We have uh, 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 Caligula and uh, many others. When that guy comes, the Antichrist, these people, all these people that I'm showing you here, all these Hitlers, they will pale in comparison to the evil of that Antichrist when he comes. He'll be so bad. That you'll just wish it, it was better if Hitler was, was leading. But right now we know that uh, believers, they have the privilege of helping to restrain the mystery of iniquity. Even as they look for their blessed hope, the Savior, Jesus Christ. How do you restrain? By doing what is right and following the, the way of truth. And not living like the devil and you know you're saved. When you see something is wrong. Go against it and say, no, that is wrong. Don't do that. Don't kill your brother. Don't beat your brother. Don't be corrupt. Restrain the Antichrist. Because the more corrupt, the more murderers, the more these things are happening, the more the Antichrist is getting power, the more the spirit of the Antichrist is coming to power. We can restrain even more by doing what is right. Are you seeing the point? And at his second coming, the second coming of Jesus, we will reign as the king, as the kings led by this king, we will be the, the saints of Christ who will come back together with him. I was just talking to a brother of mine right now, talking about the new Jerusalem. We are the new Jerusalem who will come from heaven and don't like a bride. will be so beautiful, will be coming from heaven and will be coming now to rule. Jesus being the king and then we will be kings. He is the great high priest and will be priests. Are you seeing the point? At his second coming, he'll be the Lord and will be lords. <laughs> Do you know you'll be a lord? And by the breath of his mouth, he'll destroy the works of the enemy. The Antichrist will have his power taken away and completely destroyed. Because the Bible tells us in uh, Daniel, in the book of Daniel 7, 26 that the antichrist he will be destroyed you have to choose who you will follow my friends see but the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end that's how the antichrist will end and will be reigning with christ my friends you have to choose today who you will serve if you choose to follow the mystery of iniquity and Satan and the spirit of the Antichrist. It's all up to you. It's all up to you. You'll remember this voice, my friends. You will remember this voice one day if you don't believe the gospel. My friends, believe the gospel. Follow Christ and do what is right. What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's the good news about what Jesus did for us. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And the Bible tells us how he died. How did Jesus die? By shedding his blood. For what reason? Why was the blood important? If he could have been strangled or electrocuted or drowned in water, could there be no salvation? 
I don't think so. Why? Because the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. He had to shed his blood. Why is the blood important? Leviticus 17.11 tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that atones for the soul. It's the blood. But it's not just any blood, not any, you know, your blood or my blood. We are sinners. We are, we are filthy. We are full of sin. We have lied. We have uh, been corrupt. We have uh, done many bad things. Ever since birth, we have, we have walked in the way of unrighteousness. So how can I atone for you? And how can you atone for me? The Bible tells us it can only be someone who is sinless like Jesus. And we thank God because of the good news. The good news is that Christ, 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He shed his blood for us. So that if you believe in him, you'll not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. All you need to do is understand this fact, believe this fact, and after you understand and believe it, now you can confess to Christ what you have believed. Confession comes after you believe, because you can't confess what you don't know. You confess what you know and tell Jesus, Now, Jesus, I understand that you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I receive that payment, that atonement of sin by faith. And once you do that, my friends, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you have understood something. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And also you can share the video so that other people can also be able to hear and understand. And also subscribe to watch more videos that we post every day and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a new video which we post every day. And also make sure that uh, you check also in the description below. We have a couple of other channels that uh, are linked to this and you can be able to get more information. God bless you and have a blessed, blessed time.